And we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another bug release episode here on Future Cannabis Project. I have a fun, wiggly, weird day for you, of course, here. Um, I'm excited for it. And I, as usual, I'm joined by Claude. You, you, those that were paying attention to the show last night, which you shouldn't ever miss out on an episode of The Dank Hour every Tuesday night at 5. You can re-listen to it if you don't watch it at the time. It's, it's always playing. But... Uh, we, we had an awesome evening last night with Claude and, and discussed a lot of the pests and, and what we should deal with and how we should move forward going into spring. Um, so I'm excited to be joined today because, you know, I've, I've let some aphids get loose. Um, I've let them take over a couple of plants. So we have some some a decent amount of aphids uh, around to be able to grab some and feed them to some of these uh, beneficial insects. Now, do you want to... It, it start right off the bat here, Claude, and talk to talk to us a little bit about what you what's going on here on the, on the screen. I thought it would be an interesting. I see the word brown. I click. <laughs> uh, what, what's going on here? Because I've got two packages that came in uh, today. One seems to be some very live and active ones, and one seems to be this this woolly net with these little white dots on it. What's what's going on here? Okay, so uh, I think you received the three life stages of um, of the green lace wing. Just a minute. I mean the brown lace wing. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's restart again. Okay, so what you received today are eggs, larvae, and adults of the brown lace wing. So uh, everyone knows the green lace wing. There's two different species that are sold on the market. Um, there's Chrysopella carnea. Uh, we rear this one also. And there's a Chrysopella refilabris. Uh, there's not much difference between the two um, uh, lace wings. Um, the, I mean, the green ones. But there is a big difference with their cousin, uh, Micromus vargatus, uh, also known as the brown lace wing so um, they have uh, many differences uh, meaning that usually the green lace wing the adults will need nectar and pollen to feed on but the brown lace wing can feed on the meat diet <laughs> <laughs> like on, on um, specifically meat as an adult which is interesting because exactly. i think that the adult forms of the other two, like they, they can't even, they don't even have a mouth built to eat uh, bugs, right? They're, they're, they have more of a spout mouth to drink pollen and that type of stuff. Is that how it works? So these ones actually are able to like, like attack and eat. Yes, that's it. I mean, their 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 mouth parts are more uh, <laughs> adapted to eat some uh, adults. Uh, if it's, I mean, to then just uh, feed on nectar and pollen. So, so we have the little spec. It's hard to see for everybody. It's it's not an easiest thing to get the angle for these things. So I appreciate your all patience. If you can see the little, it's kind of in the middle of the big screen. That little spec there is that is is probably well, my guess is an egg, right? An egg that hasn't hatched yet. That's that's kind of hanging out there. there I've seen one or two run by that have hatched. So there are some in this package. And I, what what I'll do is I think this is neat, but I'm, I'm going to pull this camera away for a second and I'm going to remove it so it doesn't jar everybody's life. Um, and what I'll do is kind of take this one up front and show you this kind of a little bit closer. So this is the, this, the, the thingy that it came on, which is pretty cool. Um, so that they just hang up. Is there a suggestion? Like, should we keep this away from, I mean, naturally fans, cause that just could go poorly, <laughs> but is there any other suggestions that you have for like where to hang these things? Are they okay to get wet? Uh, wait, is it okay to like wash your walls or should I remove these when I'm washing my tent out? What's your suggestion and how long does this need to go up for? Okay. Uh, usually with the green lace wing, the eggs are really on pedestals and the egg is at the end of the, the brown lace wing, the way it lays its eggs, they're going to be attached to the jute, but they won't be this long pedestal like a green lace wing uh, usually happens. So these these kind of jute fabric, you could like split them with a scissor to hang them in different parts of your plants, uh, just next where to where the aphid colonies will be. That's what how you spread them. Um, the adults, you just release them; they'll fly away. 
and uh, go towards the aphids and they'll start eating some aphids and they'll start laying their own eggs either uh, also women um so um the larvae also are very voracious so the larva and the adult are very voracious aphid eaters which is which is the, the greens are only the larval are the really ferocious eaters of the package which is which is very exactly cool. exactly very very cool so i'm going to hang this up and then i'm going to fill this with aphids and then we're going to release we're going to get down to business and release a shit ton of bugs so do you want to talk a little bit about i don't know you could talk a little bit more about these lace wings kind of their life cycle might be a good idea something along those lines or whatever you want while i do that i'm going to have headsets off so you're going to have to survive without me for a moment <laughs> what's good very, there are very very good advantage also about them the brown lace wings the micromus variegatus it's a very cute name micromus variegatus so um this latin name in French, they're called émeraude or chrysalis brune. Uh, so uh, the brown lace wing. So what makes them fantastic too, apart from the side that the, um, the adults also eat aphid, they don't need pollen or nectar to survive, is that they will go uh, from four degrees Celsius to thirty degrees Celsius, sometimes a bit even more if they can find some shade. So for people that have cold greenhouses and their, their aphid situation starts early and usually that other predators wouldn't be efficient against those aphids just the aphids would be at ease at these low temperature uh, when you open up your unheated uh, greenhouse in the spring wherever you are in canada or even in certain places in the states or elsewhere in the world meaning that uh, if you, it's really cold in the greenhouse Usually the aphid predators are, are not active until 10, 15 degrees Celsius, something like that. So um, it is very good to have this brown lace wing as, as a new uh, ally against aphids because of their effective temperature range that's really from 4 to 30 degrees Celsius. And meaning effective that they will still be active and eating. So they can withstand a bit less and a bit more uh, of that range, but to be efficient and to be able to eat, uh, that's what happens. Um, the female will lay eggs about 100 to 200 in her lifespan that lasts about two to three weeks. Um, the period, like from the egg to the adult, it lasts about four, about three, four weeks. Um, from that, two weeks will be spent as a predatory larva. The aphids they consume, um, the larva will vary very much depending on the size of the aphids. Uh, if we're dealing with uh, very small melon aphids or we're dealing with big potato aphids or big cannabis aphids, um, they will eat a, a bit less, but it's anywhere between 40 to 200 a day. <laughs> wow. So they're really nourishes. Um, they will trigger the defenses of uh, uh, the all the defense mechanism uh, of aphids, meaning that running away, falling to the ground, when they're present, they cause a panic. Uh, their known predators would be birds, or, uh, and um, and we're going to release some of these bugs on these bugs right now because we're looking at a big old population of. So caution too that we have to make sure is to reduce the fan speed, especially at night, because they, they prefer to work uh, in the nighttime too. Um, yes, they're more active. Uh, um, they'll be active like uh, around the clock. I mean, sometime, but I mean, they prefer at night. Uh, if we have to release them, we can release them outside also, uh, like 600 per hectare. In the spring uh, to support our nat natural population and if there's we have to react in one spot uh, we'll have one to two hundred and odd spot at once that we'll use so they'll go after aphids mainly but they also go after white flies uh the nymphs and white flies uh leaf hoppers even 
uh, small carpet builders. I love that. Leaf hoppers are actually a serious issue in my space. They, they, not right now, but by midsummer, they actually come up pretty bad on a regular basis, which is really interesting. So they're releasing a few now. And you know what's awesome is I wanted to really throw this out there and, and mention it as well, is I just was in my tent earlier today, like going through and checking through things. And it's been how, how many weeks has it been since the Anita's since we released the crazy mites? Oh, it's time flies. I think it's almost a couple weeks. months, right? Uh, no, not less, a bit less than that. <laughs> Maybe six weeks, six weeks ish. Oh uh, yeah. More than, yeah. Well, there's a new bloom of them going really happy. They're 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 doing really well, and I like I can see them more than I saw them after two or three weeks after. So they've clearly established a population in there, and are are having some fun, which is which is exactly what I want to see. I've seen a few rover beetles coming out to play here and there too, which has been awesome. But like, I was really impressed by by seeing the amount that I saw today. Now that tells me that there's probably something that they're trying to deal with or or, or able to feed on. But it, but it's it's a good sign for me to see that much activity and and then them them going nuts and all the plants look really healthy too so that's not the issue right so yes yeah I have I'm having more and more accounts it's fun because it's been a, a, just a couple of months that we released this to the market and now all the testimonies are coming in uh, about people telling me they're establishing in their mother plants and they they've seen tiny babies and oh uh, we see something there in the back <laughs> there, it looked like there was a little bit of a monster size one in the back there. exactly a, a big one. <laughs> and and just you guys got to stay tuned because we're going to talk a little bit more and then we're going to release some bugs and then we're going to watch these things just voraciously d devour stuff hopefully i think it'll go better than the other one because last time we released the population into the tent and tried to catch something while they were moving around and attacking um Thank you, my dear. I don't, yeah, I'll take that. Awesome. I appreciate it. Dinner with a smile. Always wonderful. My, uh, a special shout out to my wife, Adele Ferran, uh, who is not married yet, um, but she, she's pissed. At, she just glared at me for that one. Uh, uh, to, to my future wife, Adele Ferran, who, who is a fantastic person. You just prepared dinner for me. So thank you very much. I will be enjoying this shortly. But we're going to release some of these bugs really quick. So like, so what they're on, what, like you would reckon the crazy mites that we were talking about a second ago are on their like second roll through of, of, of growth. So they'd be on their second round of kind of egg hatchling development period. Is that how it would, where we would estimate that right now? So in fact, the first eggs have been laid, uh, six weeks ago. Um, usually it takes like about um so their whole life cycle for any cysts it's like the, the the eggs are laid in masses of about 20 to 40 eggs and uh and they will lay 40 to 250 eggs during their lifespan if the conditions are good for them and out of these eggs will come out the first stage that has six legs but is still eating then there'll be the chrysalid then there'll be the second stage then another chrysalid a couple of days then the third stage of the chrysalid, and then the adult happens. Um, I wonder what type of species of aphid did you have? It's hard to identify just that that like on the video. When I... Yeah, it's 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 not a, not an easy mm -hmm. thing to identify. They're green. <laughs> I know <laughs> that much. <laughs> green, the, the peach aphid, the cotton aphid, the melon aphid. Oh, we see a little winged individual. Is it a winged individual? Yes yeah no i let it happen and that's for you guys oh. everywhere out there you know like some people would just spray the crap out of everything no i like put oh. bugs in the corner and let them fester so that we can do stuff like this for I've all of the fantastic people for demonstration <laughs> hey man why not man it's yeah, it's for, sure. for science yeah it's for people it's for them huh. they, they, you know there's not a lot of people doing this type of thing out there and it's it's not very easy to do but it's it's also, I think, something that we all want. Like, there's nothing. I saw this guy does ant battles on YouTube now. Oh, I know. He puts colonies up against each other. I'm like, that's a little sadistic. I, I, know. Could, I could watch aphids beaten all day. There's weird things on the, and they will nobody will ever like cry for the insects, so they don't. Uh, they don't. Uh, they won't denounce them. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not that sadistic. I've seen praying mantis against the Asian giant ornith and. <laughs> It's like, it's like that. 
Uh, the, yeah. the, the Asian mantises, I think, is interesting. You see a lot. Everybody, if you if you haven't done mantises before, do a mantis because they're just fun. They're just really fun, unique things. They don't. They aren't the most beautiful IPM, but like it's unique. If you want to do something different, that's like because they're born exactly how they look when they're full sized. You know what I mean? Like they're exactly the same when they're in. They're not exactly, but they're very close to the shape they are when they're a nymph. Okay. Right. And they just develop up and get bigger where a lot of other bugs like they, they lay like 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 lace wings. For example, here is you have the the larval stage and then the adult stage. and You have these different charts. It's kind of neat to watch them grow from tiny to really, really big in the it's same structure. Be. So what do you guys think? We, we should release some bugs here and see see what happens. Yes. I am. I am. The reason why I haven't released them yet is because I'm ridiculously nervous. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> if, I'm just. Let everybody know the microphone's going to come off, so you don't hear me scream like a little girl. Because I, I'll show you this again, because I think this is important to note here, and I'll I'll bring this up. Is they're not. They're not like usually you get beneficial cloud like. Every other beneficial best I've usually got. And I mean, like I've gotten the green lacewing larvae before and eggs. I've never gotten adults before. I see them, but like just so you guys can see this container with them in it. Look at them move it and moving around. And they're like big. Mm. You know, like I am not a bug guy. I'm not like, hey, let's go hang out with some bugs. This is taking all the willpower in the world to hold steady. <laughs> And so if I scream like a little girl, it's not my fault. Um, it's, it's just part of the, 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 the happenings of happening here. So thank you, Claude, for, for, so for holding fly. my hand to do this. So they fly. They're in paper yeah. strips. So they don't they absorb shock for them during transportation. Yeah. Uh, can I be a little bit, when I dump them in here, can I be a little bit rough with them when I dump them? Is that okay? I mean, I just, I want to get them out into the container. I mean, just open up and one or two will come up, will come out and we'll see what happens. We don't want to shake them too much because they're going to play dead. The the adults like to play dead. So uh, <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Uh, they will play dead against a, it's a defense against predation. So uh, you can expect to see many that, that appear dead in the bottle. But uh, 24 hour after you release them, you slow, slowly remove the packing paper. Okay, you shake any adults back into the container. Yeah. Wait, wait. You wait one more one more hour, then you come the dead. Okay, so like they'll take an hour or so to, to come out and really, really jump forward and do their thing, eh? Packages, they're usually uh, overpacked by 10% to account for some uh, mortality. I'm, I'm looking for every excuse not to do this right now. <laughs> okay, but you guys, you all ready? Okay, believe in me. I love how I love how one of the people in the chat is like straight up, you're a brave man. I, I hope I'm a brave enough man. To what, what you have to do to release them, by the time you have unpacked them, uh, the lace wings are ready to be released. That's for sure. The adults, you release them as soon as possible. They won't wait like larvae or, or eggs. You know, uh, you don't. You, you, you it's urgent that you release them when you receive them. Uh, you find a protected area, low in the canopy, but off the ground, and you simply remove the lid. You loosen or remove some of the packing from the bottle to ease the adults' emergence from the container. That's it. Reject, you have to reduce your fan speed. It's really essential for all winged biocontrol agents. That's what people forget a lot sometimes. Um, sometimes they have no choice because their greenhouse has uh, difficulty. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not meaning, uh, I'm not uh, telling about the, the fans that eject air out of the greenhouse. And this is okay to have a good speed on that. I'm meaning, um, I'm telling more of the the, the wind they would create in the, the greenhouse. The wind has to be a walking speed, we say, for any aphidus or micromus or um, aphidus is another parasitoid of aphids. It's more like a tiny, tiny wasp. And uh, micromus or aphidolites. Uh, this is for you guys, just so you know. This is so hard not to, to sit here and watch this happen in all this camera. So, um, so the reduction in fan speed is really essential, um, and the lace wing adults are more more active, are most active at night though. Uh, they're adult; they can be active in the day, but they're most active at night. 
Um, so, and usually they never expose themselves above or near the top of the canopy during the day. So you ensured, especially that there's no wind at night, uh, little nor, I mean, little to no wind at night. Um, so, so I, I did it and they're, they're going nuts. I actually going to, uh, move it a little bit further away from me real quick. And then we got a few that got released into the chamber with the aphids, which we'll momentarily have a look at. Uh, they're attracted to, they're attracted to lights at night. So if, if, it, if it control is best, uh, in uh, night light areas, um, you consider you, you're going to turn off the lights. For even more, more even spread. Okay. During the day, you have to look under the leaves to find that. Under the leaves, still be hiding under the leaves there. Okay, cool. So we got the aphids and uh, the them coming out. So hopefully, we should get some some good action happening momentarily. I see some running around and activity increasing. So let's get the camera set up. I'll remove this for a second. <laughs> that that is that is some seriously different to to release them live as a whole instead of just their larvae and stuff like that that is a different experience together i, I appreciate this one claude this has been awesome <laughs> and it's exclusive because uh nobody has ever received larva or brown lace wing eggs except maybe from uh for some researchers working with applied so they come from, uh, they're reared by applied bionomics. They're uh, friends of ours. Uh, we distribute their products, excellent, different, unique predators they have. They have their surfid fly, the otter fly, which is another amazing aphid predator. Uh, the surfid fly, the adults, they need nectar and pollen. So you need to provide them with that. And then the, they'll go lay eggs and uh, just near the aphid colonies and uh, They'll emerge from that, and they uh, will go, and uh, the larva will be a voracious, voracious uh, eaters. They look like a caterpillar a bit, uh, but they have pointed uh, sides, and they have different stripes that uh, differentiates them from a from a cat different uh, caterpillar. And when they they prey on a aphid, it looks like the the doom, the worm in doom. <laughs> the, the movie Doom. I, I think I think uh, I think actually um, da, 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 Peter got a hold of some of that and released it, uh, and actually had a, has a video of them eating it. The I, I on know, here, I know one or two, but I seen uh, it's uh, been brought up on the subject, and it wasn't Matthew Gates. It was this guy I didn't know before. It's really uh, I tell people go see. It's such an archive. Uh, me, I'd, it's not long ago I discovered and I joined the kind of Future Cannabis Project uh, channels, uh, one and two, and Deck Hour. And it's an amazing wealth of knowledge. Uh, they go such details about living soil. About I think they talk about for three hours about photo period. <laughs> and then, there was a five-part episode on them, or like it was a three-part episode on photo periodism. I and saw. Um, um, a video with Matthew Gates and Lawrence, I think her name is, and two other folks. Oh, amazing, amazing. Uh, and this guy from uh, the. Oh, here we go, guys. We got action. We got oh. action. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, yeah. This is what you wanted, right, everyone? This is exactly what you wanted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's nuts. First time ever, this is the exclusive only here, the brown lace wing devouring an aphid on Future Cannabis Project. Look at that shot. Oh, yeah. She's going to yeah, purse him with this her mouth parts and suck her foot. So it's, 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 really devout. It's, it's really going at it. It's like seems to be oh, yeah. taking it apart. <laughs> this aphid has no chance. <laughs> no. There's an angle. Look at that. That's pretty good. Uh, if they're so nasty, I mean, they, they devise. The <laughs> it's trying to get away. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, it escaped. Almost. 
Oh, oh, no, no, don't go too far, you. <laughs> Come back here. I haven't finished with you. No, no, it has not finished with him. We, need, to, we need some dramatic movie, music. Yeah. Like yeah. Some... They're hungry. They haven't been that fed in a while. <laughs> That music is totally screwing up me being able to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, that's much better. I turned it down a little bit. But that music was not helping. I'm trying to get the focus a little bit better. <laughs> Again, <laughs> it still has that aphid and it. it's in there. <laughs> yeah, the aphid's just trying to get away and it's just got him. Can't. I can't. Forget, let it, let it go if it <laughs> you can't escape. That. Oh man, if I can just get the angle a little bit better here. So the adults eat like larvae. They're as, as hungry as larvae. Uh, bowl of seeds can I hear our reply. Oh, you cut out. He said, can you remove London? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I'm just trying to dust that, get that screen touched up a little bit because it's getting a little bit wonky, and I got some movement in my camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. I mean, that's not bad. These, these are definitely voracious, voracious, voracious bugs. Yes. They are. I told you. They ate many a day. It is a... Uh... I think he got away. I think, oh, I think yeah. he actually got away. Oh, it moves so much. That's the thing is I need to get a little bit lower. So we should have. Here we have a little fellow here. Oh. And some of fits. Oh, oh, and more fits. There's starting to be a lot more movement with them. They were kind of really settled earlier. Oh yeah, it's really you can see, true. see yes, them sir. trying to get away. I think I think we got him approaching. No, he's not quite there, but he's backed up a bit, so I might be able to get a better angle now. Oh, uh, the the aphids are, are have been triggered. That's for sure. Their defense me mechanism uh, have been triggered. They're not furtive like the the surfed the fly larva. They're and aphidolites. They're more furtive than the the brown lace wing. You can't be perfect. <laughs> No, no, you cannot be perfect, which is nuts. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, a lot of advantage. Like I said, they, they work between 4 and 32 uh, and 30 degrees Celsius. And uh, they will eat. So they're really good for uh, people that have uh, cold greenhouses. So, so that's interesting. So the cold, the greenhouses are, are like, because that's kind of one of those things is aphids have a little bit more of a narrow range or scope of the temperatures that they can handle, um, where this has got a lot further of a range by the sound of it. That's that's quite a huge difference. Yeah, because since certain species of aphids start at a very low temperature to uh, to work. We have lit lettuce growers and things like that, people that have cold the frame. Um, so it's just enough form for the certain species where they fit too. They won't really be as active, you know, because uh, themselves, because uh, they need, as the temperature gets higher, usually it's like a, an example, like for just uh, rice sweet aphid at 25 degrees Celsius, their population will double every 1.2 days. And uh, what I've really learned about aphids, what's amazing, is that 
they, they devised that, like the most uh, efficient way to reproduce their babies. They, they're the, 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 if it's they're pregnant of babies that are pregnant. So it's like a tree, tree level already inside that aphid. And these winged individuals, they're, they started to produce these winged individuals because they want to, uh, it's overcrowded now for them and they want to uh, go and found new colonies. It's their form of getting further distances away. And I think there, there here's a really interesting statement. That's from from Tickle Tink in the in the audience there. Yeah. I would prefer to have no bugs at all. It's only inviting trouble. Now, in in nature, like that's just not going to happen, my no. friend. No. Nature nature hates uh, emptiness. There's always in an, if it, unless it's uh, under radiation or really toxified. I mean, there's always be something that would be crawling and living there. Uh, so you want. A line of defense you know you want a good uh, the good bugs to be here to prevent the bad bugs they are doing water well. to see if I I mean, it's, it's, it's a good deterrent i mean to to uh, fend off an invasion to while you're waiting for your predators to arrive uh, it's always a good thing to uh, sprinkle water or to smash them like if you don't have precious trichomes, if it's just like a, uh, a plant with a good uh, <clears throat> that you can really spray hard on it with cold water, it would help for sure get them off it. But uh, or soapy water with an organic soap, like a black soap, or exactly. or just squish the crap out of them with your bare hands. You know, exactly. like I love the, I hate to, like, I, I don't, I hope you all don't think I'm sadistic for saying this, but I Colour. love the feeling I, of a good squish. Exactly. You need the sticky traps for your winged individuals and you use a bag board, like a kind of board like to use, like for uh, scouting that you'll go and you'll use and you'll bang. Uh, I mean, you'll, you'll, you're, you'll slap a bit your, some of your plants. So that they, uh, any good or bad insect or parasitoid will be showing up on this board, uh, whiteboard usually, that you can clearly see your, your friends and foe on it and count them. So you could go and like use a kind of basket, like what I do in my yard usually with the invasive uh, Japanese beetle. I usually take a stroll in the morning with a nice bucket with soapy water. And uh, I usually do it early in the morning when the dew is still there, so they, they are not able to fly away. And I just like drown them in the soapy water. I just bang them and they, like, not a bang board, but I have a bucket <laughs> for them. That, that's great. You know, when it, one plant that I, I've fallen in love with for that sticky glue factor is like trying to track on what type of bugs and what type of levels you have has actually been tobacco um jasmine tobacco has these like it's 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 got a resin and stickiness to it that is kind of not really matched um, we rear a lot of ways. insects on tobacco the aphid predators are sometimes reared on tobacco plants look at that beautiful plant so he's giving himself a little clean down a little a little wishy wash there's a, there's about six or seven in here um that are slowly coming out just, we have uh, to teach more people about banker plants <clears throat> to use uh, ornamental peppers for use to use other some plants for their pollen nectar content to use uh oats and uh, barley that you get uh, with the cherry bird oat aphids that uh, just affect grasses and these will become like a base and a breeding ground for aphidolites and aphidia species and that way they maintain themselves. So you just buy a starter plant and a banker plant. And these ornamental peppers, like for uh, Aureus too, would help. So if you have to fight these aphids, um, like the, the banker plants will help. Uh, it will also, also help the brown lacewing uh, or the green lacewing, the banker plants. The lace yeah. wings, are, so the the, the pepper, yeah. peppers and stuff, and that's because of the pollen too. It gives them a, a backup source of food, right? He said there's micros 
big bugs crawling all of your all of you right now <laughs> there's microscopic bugs everywhere there's bugs everywhere all the time yeah, and we live... <laughs> yeah the skin mite or whatever that's a freaky bug you want to talk about a freak bug that's probably one of the one of the freakiers and i think we're made out of like half bacteria Something yeah like we're mostly we're mostly bacteria and other crap bags of uh, yeah, mostly water and bacteria yeah so <laughs> i hope we really are colonies of 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 bacteria and bugs and and stuff like that and i wonder because we've we've taken the all these actions in our life and society to really over clean mm. you know what i mean like i wonder what that effect has done like do we are we are we negatively affecting ourselves by like you know oh, washing sure. in the way that we do nowadays that this that they realize with that pandemic uh, thing that now with science and keep changing and changing its uh theories but that's what science is until it's proven as a law by everyone uh, <clears throat> so uh that I mean, the, it was overfetched the, the the fear of like uh, the surfaces being infected by uh, viruses. So they've cut off all the kids from all everywhere that play. Like the kids that need to put dirt in their mouth and to be, to be able like to train their immune system to be able to fight the uh, uh, bad, bad pathogens, or whatever. Like they, they when it, you're too sterilized, that you'll be uh, like open to any a nasty bug with it and you, your your immune system don't know it out to defend itself yeah you know there's a whole book called let the meat dirt and and it's crazy because the first time you put a kid in a pile of dirt the first thing they usually do is eat it like like 99 <laughs> i got two kids they both eat in dirt like at least once yeah. um like yeah they're they're i got a beautiful family but they eat dirt and I, oh, I like uh, the eating dirt. I think it's a good thing that they eat dirt. I think it's healthy for them to eat dirt. <laughs> not poop. Don't, they don't eat poop. That's, that's not the same. Uh, some of my radishes I don't clean too well. Maybe it's intentional. Your radishes aren't doing very well, did you say? I know. I said, sorry, I said sometimes I don't clean my radishes that too well. So maybe I'm eating some dirt too. <laughs> Uh, eat a bucket of dirt, the botanist is uh, the botanist. But, uh, <laughs> so we had a really good start. Yeah, we did have a really good start. We're waiting for them to get a little bit ruppity and going again. I, I'm just like, the problem is one side of the container has uh, has like a sticker on it, which which is great for backdrop, but it's really hard to like flip it over and get into there. So I'm kind of waiting for them to come back on that onto that side have they all released out of the container i don't know how many they put in there it let, let me have a little peek about 20 or 30 something like that maybe more okay when it's there or maybe less you know it was a sample that's really nice uh, of them like uh, having put all stages We rear the green lace wing, but we don't do the brown lace wing. It's like their thing at applied. They are they are out of here, man. They are they are gone. <laughs> they are, that container has one <laughs> one on the edge of it, and okay. and really not all that much. It's it's kind of crazy how, how yeah, quickly they right. actually evacuated right. the space. So the adult, at least we saw it in action. The adult. So we have and the larva, you have the larva in another container. Yeah, the larva is is the larva. The thing there was like a couple larva in there, but they were a bit small and hard to get a hold of. Okay. So there, I've hung that up. Um, it, but there, there's not a lot to, that we're, we're we're going. I like I feel like it was a really fresh one. They just came over from Lumpy, BC, didn't they? They were in the area. Yeah, they were from the on the they were on the island of Vancouver. I mean, we definitely got a couple good shots there that we can that we will be able to use for sure. I've yeah. never seen the lace wing like that. Oh, like they, that. They, they're eggs like uh, nearly if it's that's for sure. And the larva will emerge up to five to seven days. Uh, you see the eggs; they look like little uh, whitish, sometimes more like orangey kind of a uh, 
that look like little pill, pills, like a, these little uh, like a gel, 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 like 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 little gel tabs, right? Like they look, they 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 look like um. I know the green ones. They look like they're on that stick, the pedestal you mentioned earlier. But they look, they almost look like a a little drop of wax or something, don't they? Like exactly. like some mod. Exactly, and the, the larva will emerge uh, after five to seven days and it will immediately begin eating aphids or any soft body prey it finds it will i can we had seen uh the adult do uh, earlier uh they pierce and they hold their prey and they're all, all mandibles and they suck them dry just like completely suck them from the yeah. inside out and drain them out that's why they, they wiggle so hard to get away for a bit because they're being exactly yeah and after two weeks as larvae and uh, consuming hundreds of aphids um they take to the ground and they they will do um in the leaf litter or the, the uh they, they will pupate or sometimes they do it under pots too and the adult will emerge a one week later out of that so, so is that, the pupate time is like one week yeah exactly period. exactly uh, how big are because i saw like one or two i've seen one or two like lace wings in their in their pupil stage it's very like, small it, it's yeah a, it's a small like a whitish like a brownish kind of grayish kind of <laughs> uh pupa, like a like a like a, it, it, um, is it, is it like really cocoony looking like 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 yeah, like yeah. you know and the the green, green lace wing usually it's under the leaves uh but the brown lace wing it is all usually on the the on the litter on the on the ground i mean on the on the surface um if their circumstances circumstances sorry are um are right the adults will live several weeks and will lay like 100 eggs or even more uh also like typically lower in the canopy than other predators it's always in the so if people release them and they, they leave heavy in the bottom of their plants uh, they have to watch for that so they don't take away uh, their precious uh new uh, can you uh, see that one see it's coming oh I see. see it right there He's coming up. He's gonna come up for a snack. See him in the background. An adult, you mean? Yeah, or, yeah. There's an adult, right, okay. right, right. That little smut, that little darkness there, that in the in the middle. Okay, I see. Yeah, I yeah. See and that. he's gonna he's gonna come up into view in a second. I think he's he's, he's yeah. going after yeah. something, but he's been slowly progressing his way up. Uh -huh. So you can see that there's plenty of aphids. Why is it jiggly so much? There we go. And they fly to the aphids. That's really nice. And they'll go after the wing individuals too. Really? Really? Because that's... Do they kill them midair? Because I won't be able yeah. to get that shot. I, would love to do that. I need to ask Matthew or uh, somebody else with experience. If they've ever seen that before. They're not really abnormal, eh? Micromus vargatus, because they're not carried by the big international uh, guys. Uh, it's very real. it's a local thing in fact yeah i've never heard of brown lace wings before uh, green lace wing is very common chrysoperla carnea and chrysoperla and they're cheap too like the green lace wings typically tend to be pretty pretty reasonable yeah. on the price point brown lace what... wing is more price here but uh, i mean they're they go further and they have a lot more advantage too and I don't know is that like a newer thing is that just because they're newer or and it's just uh, not as common or is that just because what will be new is the uh, this year uh we're supposed to have the larva uh, offer uh, be able to offer larva of the brown lace wing of micromes vargasters uh, because now w what we um, distribute are the adults they're they're um one of the things with the adults is that they are susceptible to shock during transportation. So we try to put as many like paper um, things inside the container so that they don't uh, 
that is absolutely a shock for them. There's, there was one or two that don't look like they, they made it all the way, but there was a huge, like it was an explosion opening that container up with those bugs in it. Like it was not usually that ferocious when you get it. I think the only other thing, the thing that I think that would be closest in relationship to what it's like to free them, it would be like um, ladybugs are pretty, pretty active when you drop them. And that and... Um, I find another really active one is is rove beetles are pretty uh, and you know what those the, what we what did we release last time too last episode it was the um, aureus the pirate bug right exactly the pirate bug and the and the phalluses too uh, do you, do you know what the off the top of your head what the prices for 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 these with the with the what what they're going for in your on your site right now are they available yet oh uh, for um... The brown lace swing and are used? Yes, yes, they are. Let me check. I don't know. Me, I just know the price for the big commercial. <laughs> yeah, just because I tinkle, right. tinkle, tink just asked in the audience there. And if I could convert you to using bugs to fight bugs, I, it will make me happy. I just, I'm checking the site right now. We had to change a PayPal, didn't like that we used the word cannabis. We had a cannabis prevention kit. For growers and they block their site for uh, most of a week <laughs> but that's it, ridiculous we're going to shopify bye bye paypal and your stigma make sure, to, make sure to keep the cannabis stuff out of shopify too they'll ding you too hard i got i got removed from shopify sorry i got removed from shopify for my educational course on cannabis horticulture oh, um, they right. wouldn't allow me to take payments so be careful with that one too make sure you're trying to Oops. okay alleviate sorry. that as much as you can just as you, so you know uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a little bit weird about it too. The, PayPal is usually a little bit easier, is my understanding. Okay, so um, so on our website, uh, so again, say fit. You have anesthesis, baccarum. It's forty six dollars for fifty individuals. It's one hundred thirty one for two hundred and fifty individuals, and it's three hundred and eleven dollars for. A thousand individuals you can take a smaller quantity and they usually will establish so you just have to check uh we have different if you just call it money if you just but carrier if you just airby these are all like uh, if you just pc that parasitize a fit they go from anywhere from 19 dollars and 50 cents to 20 dollars and 70 cents that's for uh the quantities like uh, uh if you just met the carrier, it's 250 individuals. And usually they, they will like um, uh, do well with anesthetists. And they do well also with brown lace wings. Usually the brown lace wings won't go after the, the, the if it has been mummified, I mean, they've been uh, parasitized by the, the epidus. And also, and it's just, we tried it also with the brown lace wing, and they throwed everything. They were rearing, uh, applied at it, and uh, it never, uh, it didn't seem to interfere. That, that's an interesting one. I've used the Aphidius before last year, and I found like they were neat. It was cool to have like the container, and you like ha you 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 like leave it on your counter, and the eggs pop open. You see the eggs pop, and then you release them into your space, and. But they just, they, they seem to do really well. But we're going into a yard, I feel like they just evacuated the space immediately. Like, I don't I don't feel like they stuck around very long. But I don't know. They're so much smaller. They're really hard to track um, exactly what's going on. I, we were talking a little bit earlier in the show, or maybe it was pre prior to the show. But, like, it, it, it can sound expensive for some of these things. But it's it's the initial cost that's a long-term investment, right? Like I Like we were just saying... I, we released the crazy mites about six weeks ago and I have the next round of them have just self-populated. So it's not, I'm not buying crazy mites every six weeks. I'm, I'm, they're regenerating themselves and feeding and, and laying eggs and coming right back up to it. Um, so it's, it's like the same kind of, like you're saying, these will establish and they'll come back and, and stick around if there's stuff and you provide them with, with what they need. And it's like that's that's when it's the problem is people go like they, they get these sterile clean environments, which is like so perfect to just have a major influx of anything. Then they get like aphids and they go nuts. 
And then they release bugs to get rid of them, but the only thing they ever have to feed on is the aphid. And then it's just like, well, no wonder you have to buy $300 worth of bugs every six weeks because you're bringing them into a clean room. Like, bugs don't live in a clean room. You know, once they run out of food, they run out of food. Uh, uh, we see the adults. Is it doing something? Oh, it's coming up. It's getting ready. Like, I swear to God, he's about to crawl up here. I see its antenna and its head moving. Uh, tinkle, tinkle, tink. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you remove the beneficial bugs before harvest? Um, for aphidus, it's kind of hard. Aphidus batikari, if the aphidus are parasitized at the near harvest time, uh, they'll get stuck in the buds, so you'll find some mummies across. If you use green lacewing larvae, usually they walk across trichomes, they don't get stuck. And it's just the same thing, and it's just better on the crazy mite. Uh, they don't. They walk across trichomes, so they don't uh, stick to buds. Uh, the the brown lace swing. I don't think uh, the larva will stick to bud either. Uh, the adults. Mm, it might be a different um, if the buds are really really sticky. Um, I don't. I don't think their their wings would appreciate being stuck into a sticky trichome. But uh, I think they'll be able to manage. Uh, they'll hang out where the, the aphids are mostly uh, are the colonies. Um, so, the unfortunately, he's a little mites. deep in the container for me to reach the, get the camera to reach him fully. The mites will usually cannibalize each other, wander off, try to find some food, never find anything. They'll fall off the plant when the people harvest them. They'll dry up. They'll die start to death or um it's the substrate that's worrying if you use a loose substrate if you're not using the slow release sachet might get stuck in a bud or use insidious uh, the one we released uh the minute power bug in the last episode of a uh, live release um it can get stuck in the bud too that's another disadvantage so you had a warning by uh, its nature that don't use it during photo uh, photo period. That's 12 hours of darkness, 12 hours of uh, sunlight, because it will fall into the diapause usually, and it will be lazy, and it won't have any pollen and cannabis crop, unless you're doing seeds all the time, and you're always seeing, having males that shed in pollen. Uh, but even then, they are lazy, and they don't sleep. They will go into a diapause, we say. On top of that, they will stick in the buds. So our use is really contrary to what the big international companies that didn't know about cannabis at all were saying for years. Oh, you can use our use all the time. No, they didn't know they would stick in the buds. And then they know the fact also that it falls into a diapause at 12 hours cycles. It needs at least 14 hours of daylight. And then a good supply of pollen is always dedicated for it. So uh, I will use it. It's a really amazing or just a predator of trips, but I would only use it uh, during uh, the, the, the mother plants and vegetative propagation stages. You have a big issue of trips that you have trouble managing. Um, and our newcomer and his could do the job now. He needs all stages of trips, like uh, the, the or just with, and we don't. I haven't noticed this yet that it goes after trips adult, but it goes after f fungus and at adults and shore fly adults and white fly adults, jumps of them like a jumping spider. I can tell you those things definitely at attack the aphids. Like there was less aphids in there shortly after that. Like they 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 definitely kick back aphids. I can, I go, can say uh, that with a lot of confidence. Yeah, they go after nymphs. So I wouldn't be. They interrupted the cycle for sure. They probably didn't stop it, but they definitely interrupted their cycle. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see the adults in the background. It's just taking a pause, or <laughs> yeah, I think he's he's just chilling for a minute. No, he's trying to work his way up. I mean, we'll try it. We'll we'll, we'll shut it down here in in the next six or so minutes here because we've 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 had a good hour and it's been a a long long day. Um, but, uh, but we what, did get a great uh, shot. Uh, I mean. The larvae, can we take it? They're too, a bit too small, and maybe. They're yeah, they're they're a little bit, and the the the. Let me see. Let me have it. Let me have a look. Because I I put the net up. Well, because I've used the container for the larvae, 
for this because they only got one clear plastic container. The other, the other, ca- other item came in um, uh, like a hollow plastic container, which was a little bit. Oh, here he comes! Is he coming up? Come on, mother! Come on, you can do it, brother. So. <laughs> Yeah, if there was some kicking around, they've they've migrated themselves a little bit. But yeah, I think he's just like there's some on the other side of the leaf, and that's what he's mainly eating on. You know, I, maybe, maybe you know what he's eating right now. He's just having sweets. He's just having some uh, some honeydew produced by the aphids. Some of some of the eating some poop, some aphid no, poop. No, do they no. do that? No, some honeydew. Uh, it's kind of a yeah. It's kind of their poop because they're excreting what they cannot. Uh, they're taking in too much, so they're excreting that honeydew, and that honeydew will provoke um, a secondary infection of a, a pathogen or stuff. Uh, in French, call it fumagen. I forgot the name in English. Uh, the black soot, black soot uh, fungus that was established in the to add to the the nastiness of that uh, honeydew dripping. And I discussed with the licensed producer today. He was asking me what he could do with the, the buds that had honeydew on them, <laughs> the lower buds. I said, sorry, brother, you have to destroy that. <laughs> it is not uh, good uh, at all to, to have that. Uh, the product is contaminated now. And you know, you- I think you touch on something good there that that's with the the flower thing is is a lot of the time like this is a preventative, and plants that plants that are flowering and are covered in trichomes and stuff like that pests typically avoid. If you like, if you get some cover crop down, that's where the pests are going to be. And if that's where your pests are going to be, that's where your your predators are going to be, and and that's going to what's going to be what's going to keep your your area safe, and then you don't get a lot of issues with your in your flower at all because that's where everything all the actions happen it never gets all the way to the top that's why we see bugs attack the bottom of plants usually first yeah. you don't usually attack the top are there are there any pests that attack the top first regularly mm. uh, that that start with the top for preference to start with the top of plants yeah like preference like either maybe maybe caterpillars that like to eat, get into the into the flowers uh, brother Usually, are in the first. Uh, I mean, are always like near the the, the growing tips. Um, some mites like like to congregate towards the 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 heat, and uh, that's a way we have to harvest them. We use heat uh, sometimes to uh, channel them and wear in containers. Uh, hmm. So I think it must be. Eating some some honeydew. Something or another. I'm gonna. I'm so there's there's about I there's well, enough oxygen. Oh, there, there's a couple more getting active that are waking up and coming over to this space. When you receive like a, when we'll have on the market, I don't know what kind of substrate that will come. The brown lace swim yet a larvae. Um, so usually the, the adults come in a, a small pill bottle, kind of a kind of a small like a juice like bottle or uh plastic and inside there's like paper strips to help it like during transportation ah you see it's like cleaning up itself ah here's another adult you had a good shot of the other one there up there but this one seems to be closer to the, the aphids the first shot that you had yeah it's the one. You see, it's cleaning up. It's uh, it's yeah, it's getting uh, prepared. It's getting uh, prepared. I need like a little strategical stick to like make them move <laughs> and stuff like that. It looks like I, I feel like this one would look like it was finishing something off. It's really hard to tell, and this one's still just kind of hanging out, looking like he's doing what he's doing. And the the green is larva, and usually comes in the barley. Uh, and uh, you have to wash, uh, watch because sometimes there'll be 
just emerge and when they just emerge are really tiny they will grow up fast hey i like that I, yeah i i, I, I like to to mush them up and lay lay the poop on or the chemical script camera maybe it'll attract the lace finger of course you must place some live ones near there too yeah for sure i don't think uh it would attract them much <laughs> it seems a good idea for you then i mean for i got action over here content. okay oh they're looking for life sip sacks i call them like they'll just go and pierce the, and get the juice out of it they don't de- eat them all and they just get their life fluid there they're, they're pretty crazy man like they're they're very active like this guy has been going i think to town pretty good it's really hard to Ah, here's one. Another one. The the one this guy looks like he's he's gonna see he's he's hunting. Mm-hmm. And I think we're gonna he's gonna he's gonna run into something sooner than later. Yeah, there's you can tell these aphids are in the opposite corner of the container. They could not actually be much any further away from the lace wing population that is in here. It's it's kind of not to, I don't know if they can sense it or or maybe there's a light or something that they're more attracted to on this side uh, they, they 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 triggered the defenseman in the first one that uh, encountered the first if it's uh, uh they send off signals to the other the colony that this predator presence interesting and these are kind of the flyers by the look of it too they're a little bit more flyy a little bit more running around but that that's kind of the activity of that's that one looks like he's hunting right they, they will fly for sure and the the is aphids too will fly <laughs> the flyers we just see don't eat your buddy no, don't eat your buddy no exactly that's exactly this something that we are want to avoid do, do they do they cannibalize i know like the 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 mighty the whirly gig mike cannibalizes it a, a little bit they do they do cannibalize each other this one's gonna this one's approaching aphid zone we have him approaching the line of attack he's now on the leaf looking for prey that's a great shot right there Ooh. it goes after scale eh? also juvenile uh stage oh scale yeah awesome that's a good one people people right. don't recognize that issue when it comes right, right. leaf hoppers maybe leaf hoppers not the big adults so um meaty bugs and more so on, buddy, you're gonna find some good for the it's especially the fox glove aphid that prefers cool temperatures and it's really a big uh issue that aphid um so the, it's really fantastic against the fog glove aphid because it, it will still actively hunt and feed uh, down to four degrees celsius sorry mm-hmm. if I, I don't have my Fahrenheit on top of my fingers. <laughs> it's okay. They can suffer. We're, 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 I say Celsius all the time, and they can, they're can. usually fine. Okay, here we go. He's prowling. So if you go to Europe. <laughs> He's coming to that zone that I told you about. He's getting, he's getting like, really close. Like, look. Oh, you know, also the, the advantage. Like here we I go. Said. Here we go. Oh, oh, come on. Turn around. Sorry, I was cutting you off. <laughs> also, what, what he was doing, the other one on the plant early, earlier on, they clean up the honeydew on the plant. They, so, that, so they'll clean off the the, the excrement from the aphids. That's, yeah, exactly. That so juice, on top of that, that, they clean your pants for you. That, that juicy white sugar, the, the clear sugar. That is the Here honeydew. we go. Come on. Oh, you touched him. You knew he's there. You know he was there. Uh, uh, uh. I, I don't think he, his yeah, antenna right. hit him. I think he would have gone for it if his antenna hit him. All right, he's going back. Back to zone. I can't believe I'm getting this angle and it's actually steady. Oh.
Oh, 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 oh. Here it found a one. We have a one. Oh, yes. It got, it caught it. It started to feed on it. Oh, yeah. It's got it in between its manable. It's trying to run away. Yeah, and you see the other ones. They're leaving. They're running. They're never that fast. Usually, aphids, they're so slow. I, 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 I usually have the image that aphids are like cows. So they're really like. They're just that, like that is exactly how I see them. Yeah. <laughs> and like ants farm them like cattle, like the far, uh, cows. So. Uh, yeah, look at know, him. He's going at them hard. So when you have aphids, you have to get rid of your ants. If you have any ants colony present, that. I'm not meaning. I'm not telling the tiny little brown ants, but uh, any black ants usually will be species that will farm uh, ant uh, aphids often, and they will protect their cattle against any parasitoid or parasit predator that happens to be there. So if there were ants present, they would even try to attack that brown lacewing it out there. Oh, look at that aphids being an idiot! Oh, look at me! I'm bold. I'm gonna walk up to the guy that eats me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's one in, the, in its back. Eh? So he, he's, he's behind him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, he's another there. one. That's two he's hit now. <clears throat> exactly, another one here. So that's it. Uh, really Sorry, this is a hard angle to hold yeah, with my bare hands here. First. If you want to get rid of aphids, you get rid of your ants first because any biocontrol won't work. So you use a borax. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Borax and sugar. Uh, I think you can find a recipe on the internet. I, I know that Ray has a formula that's ready. Uh, if you have pets, though, or babies that are crawling on the floor, uh, you want uh, that container up in the air. Uh, the ants will go and get it, get to it, and the ants will go and feed out of the sugar and borax formulation, and they will uh, get high and be hanging out there for a couple of days. And you'll see a lot of ants, and one of them will have a genius idea. Oh, it's so yummy! Let's go bring some to the queen, mm -hmm. and then they go bring some to the queen, and they, the queen will die the barracks and then the problem ends that way so here we have a nice example of a nice voracious micromus marigatus that's a great shot eh feasting on a nice little asian mm -mm -mm. yummy yum yum <laughs> you can see them starting to panic oh they yeah oh, it sent out a panic message to all the to all the calumny they sent, I, I'm, I'm sure they, 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 they released some uh, alarm signals. That, that, that wow, was... that aphid is gone. Oh, yeah. It's like, mine. it just, it is sucked out all of the inside of that aphid. That's absolutely, look at it, it's there, it's going, it's where to go. I'm not sure if the aphid is still moving or it's just the metal parts that we're seeing that, <laughs> so I think uh, your aphid problem will be solved soon. I think anyone's aphid problem will be solved soon with something like that. Even if it's not, it's just like it's a great episode of National Geographic. Yes. Uh, like, like he seems to be cleaning himself off, right? Did they clean themselves in between each feeding? Oh yeah, for sure. And oh wait, the there's the aphid. There's that's all that's left. The little little hairs of legs. It's gonna go find another one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but they didn't eat uh, in a long time for them. You no know, insect life goes so fast, like hours. Like it's like months for us. <laughs> I've always kind of wondered that when you're that small and life is that quick, is it like what is it like? Does yeah. like an hour feel? Somebody like asked that before on the chat. The, you I'll wondered what insect was. Um? Thinking about <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what, this aphid is like that few seconds that it took to get eaten probably felt like forever, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially when this thing first got in there and it got him.
that was so their their main survival strategy basis is reproduce let's reproduce as fast as we can make sure that we survive some of us survive to re perpetuate and the thing with the nasty aphids is that one is enough to restart everything because they are already pregnant of a baby and that baby is already pregnant of a baby so it's a three level thing it's like crazy that you know that you, know, you, you would see your mother that would be pregnant or a lady that she would be pregnant of a baby that's pregnant already you know <laughs> it's it's nuts because that's that's exactly they outbreed that's why they're that's why they're so voracious and that's why yeah. they managed to be so successful is because they're masterful breeders oh yeah it's just their survival mechanism they've been around for such a long time these and guys they, don't seem to be aware of him right some there. are polyphagous uh, i mean some aphids will go for many uh, species of plant and some are really really specific or specific aphids so let's say for the hops aphid it only goes on hops uh you'll never find it on another plant it will maybe try and it won't be able to establish itself on that plant and the cannabis aphid it only is found on cannabis the same thing but on the cannabis plant you can find melon aphid or cotton aphid um that uh, or black bean aphid that will attack other plants and cannabis but for the specific cannabis aphid uh, even if ops is the same uh, family member in the cannabis family and you could physically graft a ops plant on a cannabis plant uh, but they won't transmit each other's uh, characteristics but meaning that uh, you cannot find a cannabis aphid on an ops plant and uh, vice versa, uh, ops on uh, aphid on the cannabis plant. So, but you could find a melon aphid, I'm pretty sure, on the ops plant and a melon aphid on the cannabis plant. And so. there are definitely a few types of aphids that seem to go into that seem to be okay with like mostly eating anything. Oh, here we go. We got another one. We got a, we got an aphid making a, making poor decisions. So my cherry tree last Friday. I know a problem. Your cherry tree, uh, the aphids in your cherry tree, I don't know what species there are. If they're the cherry bird oat aphids, though, that's a, something else totally. These are, uh, we use them uh, on banker plants. Uh, these cherry bird oat aphids, they don't only attack um, grains. I mean, uh, monocotyledon uh, plants, not dicotyledon. So meaning that they will only attack chives and wheat and ornamental grasses and grasses. So that way we grow wheat grass or barley or oats and we infest them with the cherry bird oat aphids. And this will be the banker plant that will be used um, for uh, aphidus, lace wings, uh, aph uh, aphid predator image, the aphidolites aphidivisa. So these could be released outdoors, uh, these brown lace wings and the green lace wings too. Uh, really? it, I would spread them across acres and hectares because they're kind of pricey and they're already naturally present. But, um, but for a smaller like gar uh, greenhouse, it would be pretty advantageous to put them oh, in exactly. the space and then let them get out a little bit. So these know? one, like I said, they have a, a they have the way away they're so voracious very efficient and they and have they're a quite beautiful too like their lacy oh, yeah. pretty wings are, are actually very nice so 50 adults go for 73 dollars and you can get 100 adults for uh 104 dollars so it's about a dollar an adult uh but they go a long way meaning that they will last for a couple of weeks they will eat tons of aphid and they will maintain they will establish themselves if you have long lasting crops uh, meaning that uh, enough to for them to uh, to hold on to uh, for a while. Oh, he's back on the hunt. Back Should on the hunt. Just doing automatics, and maybe they won't go through their whole cycle of life. The pretty face. Come on, give me the face. There we go. And that's the, that's the signature lace wing that 
that thin, almost see-through lace wing. You're going to see that in your garden when you spot them, right? That's one of the big telltale signs. So, uh, with the, with the, with the, when you have a su 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 successful application of Nicomus, you really get low-level pollination too on your plant. So they, they will go, they, they look, uh, meaning they they can go on a diet of aphids, the adult, uh, the brown lacewing and microbes. The green lacewing cannot. Uh, the green lacewing all... really need nectar and, po nectar and pollen. But the brown lacewing will also go for pollen and nectar. Uh, so you'll get a low level pollination and you'll also get a cleanup of your honeydew. They really like to snack on honeydew too. They like sweets, too. and that's that's where you get a lot of your pop and fizzle from when you when you're smoking weed. Ah, uh, yeah, the, you don't want to be smoking that type of uh, honeydew at all. Um, you get long range searching capability because it flies, so it goes and finds the aphid colonies. Um, it's a generous predator too. It's like I was saying, it will go after white fly nymphs. It will go after spider mites, but meaning i wouldn't use them i would use them primarily for aphids for aphid huge, control huge dramatic music they, they they will they will go about uh, some scales and some mealy bugs too but i mean the juvenile stages of the scale not the, the full protected scale that we stuck to your plant uh, they won't go for that but they, they will go after the juvenile stage, stages and any soft body prey in fact um they they hang out well with uh with uh and he's, a, he's in that aphid now, isn't he? Yeah, he's got him. Boom. Eating him. Oh, my God. That is one hungry bug. <laughs> <laughs> I would not like to run into a 20-foot version of that. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. And and, and they're really... They're, 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 you weren't joking with how voracious they are. Like... <laughs> This is this is hardcore. This is like I feel like we should have a graphic advisory board going. Yeah, and the final advantage is extreme predation. Really extreme predation. And so we see this voracious thing. I as a human being, is it gonna eat me? I'm no. Wake up one night with this thing like no. bite, put a butter bites in me or all, whatever. That... All, all the, the insects that are parasitoids that we're able to sell. Uh, a majority, like there are no harm to humans and pets or domestic animals. They won't become a problem on themselves. themselves. Uh, we have only one uh, generalist predator, Sphysis that sometimes could pierce the stems uh, of plants if it has nothing else to eat. And, but that's it. Uh, we have sometimes some feeder mites if it's not the species that we're using usually, uh, I mean, other company, big companies are using them, like Carpoglyphus. And these, if they escape and the conditions are right for them, they will cause some damage to some uh, emerging, like uh, to, to some new shoots. Uh, but usually any of the pet, the, the pet uh, I mean, the predators we have, some parasitoids are no harm to your plant. They won't establish themselves, I mean, meaning, causing a problem in your, in your dwelling. We hope they establish themselves in our greenhouses. Uh, you have to know which one you're using if it's for cannabis. Uh, like I said earlier, our use will stick into buds. You don't want to see that around. You have to watch the substrate that will stick in the trichomes. Like um, here, uh, we're not uh, we're not on the cannabis plant. What, what, uh, what plant is this? That there's, the aphids were on. Uh, th that this is on bergamot, I want to say. Okay. Bergamot or some form of mint. Yeah. So they they are able to, uh, they're big enough, these ones, and they are able to walk on cannabis uh, without being stuck like uh, Aurelius would be. Um, so th this is another advantage, and also the larva themselves, too. <laughs> And I think it killed the aphid. The aphid the, the, yeah, yeah that, that, that's a dead aphid now. That's oh, yes. Really the movement we're seeing is just a fake. I mean, the movement is just a 
the mandibles are shaking yeah, that the remnants of that empty sack they seem to eat the whole body too like they don't seem to just leave it hollow it's like 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 the other one it was gone like they feel i felt like he ate most of the physical <laughs> body of the the aphid I'm trying to see if i could find oh hi there brother <laughs> said about the shoulder like this yeah we love it too we're happy because the, the anesthesia show was cool was really nice too uh yeah they only bumped into the aphids they were kind of shy and now, yeah and now so we seen them in action and it's just we saw them moving i mean in action meaning moving around and running like crazy like the crazy mites aren't they are yeah they they were very voracious uh, and very I think crazy. Was cleaning up on you the one we saw earlier i'm just under that one yeah i think this one is feasting on on you on the plant i think that one right there is still kind of like just chilling having a snack not exactly sure he's just, he just seems to be having a good time though i'll tell you what that was that was awesome so we got some good murdering done um yes. so, so everybody is we got some good bug shots i think that was exactly what we want wanted to oh yeah that. for sure and, and, oh, am I coming through? Am I was I coming through a little bit faded there? Or what, how was my volume? Was it actually audible, or was it really quiet? I was really gathered a little attention <laughs> because, uh, because of the relative fame of its uh, larger cousin, the green lace wing. It, so, are green lace wings larger? Uh, yeah, it's a bit larger. Yeah. yeah, not like it's necessary. You saw that thing devour. And the green, uh, it's not a, it's not a flaw that it's less. Uh, it's a bit. It's smaller it's as as a uh, as hungry uh, uh it's also because it's uh being more nocturnal and they're seldom seen so uh that's another thing that why it didn't attract attention but it has so many advantages and so many uh the, the adult eats the aphids to uh they're really they can fly to the aphids so you you um you'll get a better chance of solving like a general problem of aphids across the greenhouse with these and just trying to sprinkle some aphid some uh i mean green lace wing larva here and there or the eggs too yeah and it's it, it seems interesting well you know you what we saw the, the eggs on jute uh, the jute is always sterilized so uh qa sometimes in licensed producer kind of uh, allergic to that for unknown and wrong reasons uh they should because it's a really nice way to release them in the egg form um the green lace swing and the brown lace swing uh because the, the jute you can just break up the jute string uh, with a with a pair of scissors and put different strings uh on the plants oh that's smart okay. so i can take that that and cut it up a little bit put some into my flower tent like kind of for the for exactly. the and, put them around, and that way uh our nature intended it like they will spread their uh, the brown lace wing, they will spread the eggs. The the green lace wing has a long pedicel, so that way when they emerge the larva, they climb up the pedicel and they uh, rarely will meet each other. Uh, certain companies have found ways that they glued the first of all they dissolve the with an organic solvent the pedicel out of the eggs, and we do it too to get loose eggs, and and uh, then they'll reglue the eggs on the cart uh but we don't do that we don't like that method we don't find it efficient because uh, i believe five to ten twenty percent maximum will make it out of these cards yeah, it's a really low release rate on, on this because uh, they end up just getting stuck on their way out right you know, and we have they have to sprinkle like many like uh Ephistia eggs and citrotera eggs and other types of eggs so they have and cysts so they have a uh, food uh, because when they emerge they they want to eat whoever's in front of them so they'll sometimes you'll be so a family member so they'll cannibalize each other right away and some won't even like get unstuck of that glued card and so i don't like that delivery method so i prefer the jute when people can handle that uh the loose eggs or the larvae or with that brown lace wing the adult that we just let fly out of the container so like the release uh, for the brown string is really to open up the container under the canopy somewhere when the, the wind 
speed is lowered at the walk, walking speed that we, we say, or even lower in the night, especially in the night when the lights close, if you can like lower your fans, as long as also you're not creating conditions for powder mildew or things like that. You still want some air circulation a bit uh, going around, but meaning reasonable that you see a, a tiny winged uh, insect could fly in. So we call it the walking speed fan. Uh, so uh, let's say the, 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 the wind speed will be like the, 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 the same speed as somebody walking uh, normally. Um, so uh, it's a way to measure that. So that's a little beacon in ballistic. Like I said, if the eggs are glued on card and the larva emerge, and we saw earlier two adults that were kind of bugging each other. Uh, so if they had really, really nothing to eat uh, after a while, they will start going after each other. So that's it. So they will help pollinate your crops too for people that need pollination for vegetables and things like that. Um, and also check, keep in check many soft body. Uh, so, so they're they're pollinators too. So what, what like? Because a lot of I know a lot of like. There's actually not that many flowers that bees can pollinate. There's a lot of flowers that are actually too small for like a big old bee to get into and pollinate. Yeah. Yeah, so bumble. these are quite small, so these would do well on a lot of those type of things, right? Exactly, exactly. That's why we need all the natural uh, native pollinators. They are often overlooked. Uh, people say, save the bees, save the bees. Yeah, we have to save the bees, but people are mostly talking about the, uh, the European honeybee, you know, that, uh, that we uh, rear in hives and that these hives are carried around, especially in the USA. All around these almond farms are everywhere and that's another reason why there's a lot of mortality of bees and we these bees uh, that we bring in that european honeybees will compete with the native pollinators because we're trying to bring a fix to uh, monocrops that have a lot of uh, and we're not counting on the natural predator uh, i mean pollinators so uh, they have to bring in all these hives of European honeybees or and or bumblebees inside greenhouses. Inside greenhouses is normal, more normal. I find that to have lab grown uh, bumblebees that you bring in inside artificial enclosures that are, that are man built like greenhouses. Yeah, well, people think you just get bees and you just leave them outside and that's it. Like, but outside, I would favor, if possible, trying to uh, favor all the other natural pollinators. And some that are not even bees or wasps or or um, ornits. Uh, they're just other like these lace wings or. Um. So what it makes it like really stand out among aphid predators um, against like other flies and beetles and other things. It's like it's really a varish predator, a varish predator in the larval and the adult stage definitely the advantage of of these which is really cool because uh, uh, this has been awesome this is when you receive them they will play dead as a defense against predation so you, you can expect to see many appear dead in the bottle and 24 hours after re you released you slowly remove the packing paper these little strips of paper and you shake out any adult back into the container uh you wait one more hour and then you count the dead uh usually the package that will contain 10 and more to account for some mortality that's gonna happen and, and it's also good to just let like let you know it, let let the company know if there is problems like you're shipping the, the the insane the insane amount of let's what is it um what's the freaking system called where we ship stuff um, the insane amount of, of stuff that needs to happen to make sure that these products get to you alive. It's yes. incredible, right? So yes. it's nice to know if you if you get a package because it it's like could not be your fault, you know. Like somebody could leave this in the back of a hot delivery van, and you know they shouldn't get over thirty two degrees, and it's forty eight. You know, it's <laughs> like so so that way it's like, and, and I think it's it's important because people like they'll go, oh fuck, these are like shit. You know, mm. they don't work. Half of them were dead, blah, blah, blah. And they never say or do anything. 
It's like, no, like, tell people, let them know, because then they can find out where along the system things went wrong, because the last thing you want to do is put out a product like that. And, and I we, know you guys don't. Even that, that we, we take responsibility for our careers. So uh, if anything happened, and it was really bad with that last uh, pandemic thing happened, uh, and the whole planet was ordering online. So FedEx and Perlator on all those couriers, UPS, whatever, they all drop guarantees. And we have to ship everything 24 hour express usually or less. It's like uh, with um, predatory mites or uh, beneficial insects, you don't want them a day. Like sushi, you don't want it a, a day old, you know. Uh, you Never. Want them possible. And uh, you have to install them as soon as you can, especially the Mycomus adults. They, they don't like to be uh, traveled around and being stuck in a container. So they, they, they're they more prone to have a lot of mortality because of that. Um, if you had ordered something, you take a picture right away as soon as possible. But like I said, they like to play dead. So you have to make sure that you've waited enough time to make sure that they... And for the adults, it's really easy because you will see that they fly out of the container. So, so you're saying don't just take the container and give it a good shake when you get it. No, no, that's no. Not, that's not the right choice. They don't like they don't like fluctuations of temperature. They don't like shock, and they and there's no storage time like for micromus. Like uh, certain predators, we can like predator mites like Gallolaps, Glespii, or Stratulaps, uh, Simitsus, the, the 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 soil mites. Um, uh, is also known as Poespis or Thomite by other uh, companies. Uh, um, but just to say these can last a longer time if you have to wait for a couple of days, it, it won't matter that much. And they already have food, they're pretty stable. They're not, they're, they eat a lot, but I mean, they could go on and uh, they won't eat each other. Well, and they have a variety of things to eat too, right? Like exactly. they'll, they'll eat whatever. Are they, will they be advantageous for thrip or, or fungus gnat at all? Uh, with the predatory mites I just talked about, um, yes, because they go after pupa and pre-pupa of thrips, the third and fourth stage of the thrip cycle. Mm -hmm. But uh, these micromus, I, I believe they will go after thrips, but I wouldn't use them against a thrips uh, infestation. No, um, I'm just use them. General use them. Predator, it's an added bonus that they will go after spider mites and uh, juvenile scales or uh, midi, juvenile mealy bugs, or uh, they'll go after uh, any soft body prey. But I mean, they're especially made again to prey against aphids. So that's the main. So I would use them against aphid, but I wouldn't order them if I had to fight spider mites. How would you yeah, or anything else? You just you just for this specific like, task, or uh, a generalist that's more towards it, it like more aggressive, like and it says back around the crazy mic. Yeah, that is a cool one. Well, anyways, thank you again, Claude. Where what where can we go? Like where where's the thing in the let nows, and where can we where can people catch up with you, and also find out a little bit more? Like we usually do the ending of the shows. Where do we like where do we like to go? And I also did pop up on the screen there. You can see it need as bio protection where you can order these products and you can also get them in small enough portions for regular human beings that have small grows at home, which I think is fucking awesome, especially when it comes to buying mites, because that is a nightmare when you have to, when you have a four by eight grow tent and you have to buy a hundred pack of mites, it's not the right way to go about it. So there, here's an amazing option there. Um, so yeah, I, but you go ahead. I will just finish one last thing about scouting from Ecomus. In fact, they're, they're attracted to lights at night. So um, if, if it controls best in light lighted areas, um, you can you could consider turning off the lights for more even even spread, and the adult population they, they can be seen when these lights are on, and during the day, you, you look for them under the leaves. You might find larvae, but moving the leaf often results in the adults playing dead and dropping to the ground. So you look up uh, into the densest part of the canopy without touching the plants to find the, the adults. And when the when they are hungry though, adults and larvae will also feed during the day. Uh, they're natural predators or birds. So if you're playing over there and you're taking care of your plants and you cast a kind of a shadow from you walking or the spray boom uh, equipment and the commercial facility passes over the crop, it's often enough to make the, the lace wings drop to from the plant. 
Uh, just, just to play dead to avoid it. So don't okay. own chickens as well, because that then you won't buy. Feeding, but it's to sell them enough to reduce their uh, efficacy. I mean, they, they, you don't have to worry about that really. It's just something that happens. So uh, people, if they want to meet me in person, they can come uh, if they're uh, anywhere, uh, Mississauga, Ontario, near Toronto. Uh, will be at the International Convention Center from the 1st to the 3rd of June at the uh, Okanabiz uh, Conference and Expo. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be amazing to see people like we just did at Lyft Expo without a mask. People smile. People sharing. You, you brought some bugs too with you too. You had living bugs there. I had uh, Anita did the live. It was so funny, you know. I was oh, just yeah. in my eyes, and I, it looked I was giving him her the finger. <laughs> like, yeah, I totally what? called that. I'm like, did oh. Claude was Claude secretly like not impressed oh. right there? Like, was he like rubbing his face oh, for one of these? Great, and she was with her friend, and and they're great people. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was <laughs> thinking the whole time is like fucking secretly Claude hates everyone. Oh, He's no. just like oh. one of those. Yeah. <laughs> everyone and it's like uh, too much even sometimes i have too much empathy sometimes it, it plays tricks on me so people can see me there at mrs ogad okanabis from the first to the third of june and then after that i will be uh the 15 and the 16 of june i will be at cannabis wiki in london and ontario uh we won't have a boot there but uh i'll be a speaker uh, on stage, uh, talking, I don't know yet what I'll be talking about. I think I'll be talking about the cannabis aphid and anesthesis or something else, but uh, I'll see this. Needs Probably to something to do with bugs, right? Exactly. <laughs> and then the week after that, I'll be the 23rd. Uh, I mean, the, the, around the 20th of June, will be a grow up expo. Sorry, I don't have the exact date in my head right now. Uh, in, on Victoria, in Victoria, I mean, on Vancouver Island. It's going to be a blast too. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have a boot there. Um, beforehand, I'll be doing, I hope there's still a ticket. My colleague is supposed to have bought me one for this farm tour uh, organized by Stratcan. They're going to visit three or four farms. Uh, I'm going to be there and I'll be uh, outdoor farms of cannabis in uh, Vancouver Island. And then I'll be at the grow up uh, thing and people can reach me. Um, on my Instagram at Claude underscore D underscore Druid, D R U I D. Uh, I don't have much activity, but I think it's going to be more active. Uh, and that's is also on Instagram. Uh, we are on LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn too. I have amazing video I post uh, sometimes on my page on LinkedIn. You can see any assist against the uh, aphids, white flies, and trips. Uh, people can reach me at C Robert, uh, all in one word, at anatsisbioprotection.com, all in one word. And there, our website is anatsisbioprotection.com. Um, the new website is coming online soon. Uh, the, new, the old website is amazing too, but it's going to be even better with the new website. Um, people can write me if they want to order online at C Robert. C R O B E E R T at and that says bioprotection A N A T I S and always it's, it's gonna be all written down the name how you spell and that's this that by the way the name of a ladybug and I'll give them a discount code uh, uh, it won't last long so uh, hurry up we're gonna change with the new website we'll have other, other ways to promote our things and, for sure uh, man it's always uh, amazing thank you very much uh, London for letting me. Uh, educate people and showcase things and and uh, help people uh, be preventive with their crops so prevention uh, is the way to go um, because we have success with curative sometimes but it's it's really the way to go is prevention it's a, a, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure right like it's is <laughs> It's, and it's, it is about prevention. It's about stopping these things from happening. But it's also knowledge, right? It's a little bit of knowledge. It's little facts like, hey, I can keep a clean room, but you're never going to be bug free. You're never, never going to be bug free. It's best to be protective. You know, it's, it, it, these things are so important. And I just want to take a moment and really thank you, Claude, 
for taking the time and, and, and coming out and educating and teaching people on a regular basis. You make it, make it a hard part of your effort. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. Good. Perfect. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I think we have another show other. coming. Uh, I don't know when we'll do another live release. Tell me. I might have some new friends that will be able. When the surface <laughs> is back, maybe we'll try to do that too. That would be something. But I yeah. then you have cleared your, your AFID problem with, uh, <laughs> with the group around the next week. So oh, I'm pretty sure we won't have a problem anymore. Uh, that is a for sure. Z's. So the other show on the deck hour, have you uh, have the date? Yeah, I, let me see. I'll, I'll bring up the date for the next bug be bug be be an episode. Um, I think we got two left schedule in this game. Maybe one or two left on the schedule. But I mean, like you're our, you're now our bug dude. So like you're not going really anywhere very far. Just as and so. I mean, you can you're invite all, you back to the loop. Back to Gates too would be fun next time. And- to have him around. Yeah, that would be great too. I'll shoot him a message and see oh, if he's interested. Oh. August 16th <laughs> is our next episode that I see here. And then uh, I think there's another one in November. August 16th and November are our next two episodes. That's crazy. That's crazy, crazy. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robert, again. And I am going, uh, Robert, I re- read your last name, Claude. Again, I appreciate you and, and happy growing, man. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks yeah. again. You're pronouncing it right, Claude. It's not Claude. Cl- or clown or Claude. Claude. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get that French oh. accent in there, Claude. Oh. 